Eight inch drum, bit tricky to sand. Barely fits in there. Even trickier are the hoops. Yeah, we couldn't get a hold of any stock that was the right size. So we took some 10 inch six ply and then you cut them to get to the diameter and put the seams opposite. So then when you, when you cinch them together. Is that nine inch stock or 10 inch stock? It's made out of 10 inch stock. We needed nine inch stock, but. So 10 inch stock, it, so. 10 inch stock cut down, laminated and squozen <laughs> into nine inch stock. So then, you know, just kind of figure out how much you need to cut out. And you just get. snuck up on those with the bandsaw and the OSS? Yeah, totally. And then here's some that I already did. Uh, so in addition to the band clamp, you know, I'll put F clamps all the way around. Uh, I was finding that the band clamps were kind of squishing them a little bit. So I just cut some dowels so that when I glue, you know, I can stick these in here and keep it, you know, keep it round as it's getting clamped up. But both these wound up within like a 16th of an inch of round. Um, one of them I think is closer than that. So to me, that's about as good as any other laminated hoop. So uh, especially on an eight inch drum, I think that that is gonna be just fine. So there's kind of a pain to make, but- uh, Seems like it's know, gonna be a messy glue pretty up. good. Yeah, it's, it is a little messy. <laughs> I'm gonna speak of which, I'm gonna go get a rag. Chose the wrong business model. We could be letting people pay us to break stuff instead of yeah. Making I gotta stuff. say, I uh, I thought that was gonna be kind of a flash in the pan over there, but um, apparently they are titans of industry. Because holy crap, that place they are bringing in money hand over fist. Not as messy as I anticipated. Yeah, well, they're small. Doing this for larger hoops, I mean, this is a good method for like, anytime you have to make hoops that are a super weird size, like, you know, vintage drums are like 27 and a half inches or something, you know? Um, this is a good way to do it. And then when, when you're doing big hoops like that, trying to do this, it is a total mess. And then clamps to make sure the lamination is nice and tight. Yep. They're smashing stuff to the Macarena. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah, man, sometimes the soundtrack over there is pretty weird. In terms of music to smash things to. I guess if you, like, hated that song when it came out, like, you know, most people who are insane did. They like inspire a considerable amount of rage. <laughs> Oops. All right, we took a pause to stage out the table and shoot an update video for the Calderwood channel because YouTube apparently was gonna demonetize the channel due to inactivity. Dude, I meant to say that we do like shop vlogs on your channel. I wanted to like advertise that when I was doing the shop update and I forgot. Smooth. Yeah, real smooth. Well, next week. All right, taping up a few more shells. This is all getting sprayed, aside from that one. And once those are in spray and rolling, We'll get to trimming and cauterizing these. My goal is to get the throws, butt plates, lugs, vents on, get the hoops on, tension rods, protect the fabric, keep everything from fraying. If the snares don't happen today, that's fine because that's more fiddly work. And I actually remembered to bring the Scotch Guard today. Yay. 
So you people that eat your spaghetti next to your drum have a little bit of protection. I haven't seen it this full since the Hellcats. I know. We got a man down. Yeah. Broken roller. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Balls. Let's take a picture real quick. <laughs> Some of them are worse than others. Yeah, this one is uh, uniquely sad. <laughs> I mean, everything that's here is grown at any time. So the process we have going at present is Bill trims with a razor, comes in with the scissors, heat gun, then he uses the torch to burn out the holes. He plops over here. I do a quick trim reburn, hit it with Scotch Guard once that's dry. I attach the butt plate, throw off, vent, and wax the bearing edges. And by that point, another one's usually on deck. At that pace, we'll be able to tag team the lugs. I have one started to see if we can get away with without gaskets or spacers. Depends on the lug splay. Oh, yeah, you're right. I guess it does need thicker washers, huh? I didn't look. Well, they could definitely, it wouldn't hurt, I think. Weird how different they all are. I also lost track of which ones I had already waxed the bearing edges, so. Yeah. Whoops. Oops. <laughs> I guess I'll revisit that after. Yeah. Didn't quite hit the goal, but we came close. We are actually short on some parts. Two bottom hoops, DFD's out. We're short on some lugs, need some gaskets. We're good on snares and heads. So even if we weren't missing the lugs, we still wouldn't have finished because badges did get cut, but we still got to do the T-nuts for those and get those in before closing them up with heads. That's okay, we made Pretty ripping progress. I'll see if I can get back here a day during the week because it would be nice to wrap these up and not have them sit here collecting dust until next weekend. We believe two Turkish Crescents just landed on the to-do list because one sold. And if we're making one... Yeah, we'll make two. <laughs>